pictures, home setup, navigating Airbnb, picking guests, amenities, and price, these are all mega important aspects of starting your Airbnb off on the right foot and things that I wished I knew more about when I first started. If you're new to me, I'm Matt, a 50 time super host who's hosted over 3,500 guests, earned millions on Airbnb, and have taught and coached hundreds of other hosts on how to do the exact same in my Airbnb hosting courses and programs. Starting out on Airbnb can be both scary and exciting. As a seasoned Airbnb host and trainer, I'm often asked, what are the things that I'd wished I'd done differently when I was starting? With the benefit of hindsight, I can now confidently say that there are six things that I wished I'd nailed sooner. And they are pictures, home setup, navigating Airbnb, picking guests, amenities, and price. Quick question, how many of you are new to Airbnb? That is, you've hosted fewer than five guests. Let me know in the comments below so that I can better tailor the content of my videos to the people watching. Now back to the six things that I wished I knew when I was first starting out so that you can avoid the same costly mistakes that I made and the stress that comes along with not having any reservations coming in, but still having bills going out. Pictures. According to Airbnb, pictures are one of the most important aspects of a listing, right up there with price. To nail pictures, I insist on using a professional photographer right off the bat. Don't wait until everything is perfect. It's probably never going to happen. So once you get your home about 85% decorated and guest ready, call for photography. Be sure to stage your place so that it looks like a home featured in a magazine or on HGTV. I did an entire video on setting up for a photo shoot and you can watch it by clicking on the little eye in the upper right hand corner of the video. Next is home setup. Setting up your home for guests can vary depending on your situation. If you're creating an Airbnb from scratch in a place that will only be used by guests, then your job is going to be a bit easier. But if you're welcoming guests into your home for the very first time, then you've probably got a pretty big job on your hands, I'm afraid. You're going to need to declutter, to clean, to remove most of your personal items, including photos of you and your family and friends. Trust me, your guest doesn't want to wake up and roll over to see a picture of you and your friends or your partner smiling at them from the bedside table. You also have to create space for your guest belongings in your closets and in your dressers. And please don't forget the kitchen either. You've got to clear out space in the cupboards for your guests food. You've got to clear out the fridge and the freezer and toss any old crummy looking condiments and freezer burnt stuff. All that should go. If you're setting up a place from scratch, your job is to equip the space with everything a guest may need. And this too can be challenging since it's hard to realize that something is missing until you need it. Think about a plunger or scissors, corkscrew or potato peeler. Those things aren't evident right away, but once you need it, you need it. One easy way to see what you're missing is to actually stay in your Airbnb for a couple of nights and see what comes up as you go about your day to day activities. Or you can join my Airbnb Foundations program and use the list that I've created after setting up over 20 Airbnb listings. There's a link in the description below to learn more about the Foundations program. Now let's turn to navigating the Airbnb website slash app. Every year, Airbnb makes great strides to making their systems easier to use. And it's actually gotten a lot better but it can truly still be overwhelming. As a new host, I recommend that you mainly use the website from a computer, and once you're comfortable, start using the app to make changes to your listing. Of course, you're still gonna want the app on your phone from day one so that you can get notified when a guest messages you and you can message them back as soon as possible right from your phone. I just don't recommend configuring your listing from the app because it's a bit confusing. 
but let me give you a really quick crash course on navigating Airbnb. First, there are two complete sides to the site. The first is the guest side, and that's what you're gonna use when you're traveling and staying in an Airbnb. And the second is the host side, and that's what you're gonna use when you're hosting. After your listing is set up, I mainly stick to two parts of the Airbnb hosting side, either on the app or on the website. And those two parts are inbox and calendar. I ignore the reservations tab, the today screen, and all the other garbage. Everything you need to know about an upcoming reservation is presented graphically in the calendar. And when you click on the reservation, you'll go directly to the message thread with that guest. And on the side of that message thread is all of the details about the reservation. And then when it's time to review your guest, that will also show up right in the message thread. So I stick to the inbox as well because I can quickly see if I have any outstanding requests or inquiries that might need my attention. And that's it, that's all I use. And yes, there are tons of other menus and tabs and things, but as a new host, I say to stick to the calendar and the inbox and then start exploring when you're comfortable, which is exactly how I teach it in my Foundations program. In the Foundations program, we explore all of those other menus and tabs and show you step-by-step step how to configure those like a pro so that you can avoid bad guests and appear more often on the first page of search. So if you wanna know more, check out the link in the description below. Picking guest. Now this one can be a doozy as well, especially when you're starting out because it's hard to know who you can trust and who you can't. And this will come with experience, trust me. The best advice here is to ask lots of questions. And if you don't like the responses that you get, then don't host the guest. You can ask almost any question too, like asking for links to their social media, asking if the guest is over or under the age of 25, asking why the guest is visiting your area. See, many of the hosts that I speak to don't even realize that they can ask all these questions. Instead, they think that they just have to keep their questions to things that are reservation related. But no, you can ask away. Hey, are you enjoying this video? Are you learning something useful that you can implement into your Airbnb business to make more money? If so, then please give this video a like by tapping on the thumbs up button directly below this video. And if you're not already subscribed, then please do so right now by clicking the subscription button and then clicking on the notification bell so that you'll be alerted when I post a new video. Likes and subscriptions demonstrate to the YouTube algorithm that I'm making quality videos and in turn, they'll suggest my videos to more Airbnb hosts and that will help grow the channel. Amenities. When starting out, the best way to think about amenities to provide to your guests is to think about what's provided in a hotel room. So things like soap, shampoo, conditioner, mouthwash, towels, beddings, and Wi-Fi as a baseline. Then layer on things that you can get from a front desk. So things like toothpaste, toothbrush, razor, shaving cream, deodorant, that sort of thing. And once you've got all of that nailed down, then you can really start to amp up your amenities. I've done quite a few videos on amenities and you can watch them by clicking on the little I in the upper right hand corner of this video. Finally, pricing. Now this one is definitely tricky, especially since Airbnb will offer you some <laughs> misguided price suggestions and even a rough comparison set of similar listings to yours. My experience though has been that all of the price suggestions that Airbnb provides are way too low. And in the case of comparable listings, the listings they're comparing you to aren't actually all that similar. See, the key to pricing is to be around the same price as your closest competitors and lower than your competitors until you get around 10 reviews. And I didn't get this when I was starting out. Instead, I was priced in line with hotels and way above my competition, which of course got me zero bookings. Then I figured out that the only way to accurately know if you're priced similarly to your competition is to do a search on Airbnb 
for your neighborhood and see what comes up. Pricing on Airbnb really is both an art and a science. And if you want all the insider hacks on how to shorten the pricing learning curve, register for one of my live pricing workshops. Use the link in the description below to be notified when registration opens up for the next one. And there you have it, the six things that I wished that I knew more about when I was just starting off on Airbnb. Of course, many of these now seem very obvious, but that's almost 10 years later. And so don't be so hard on yourself. I hope that these tips will help you to avoid the mistakes that I made early on too. So if you want to know more about how to earn above average profits, check out the other videos on my channel and if you have questions, join my Facebook group. The link is in the description below and I'll jump in and give you a hand. And I almost forgot to ask you one small favor. Give this video a thumbs up or a like if you found it helpful and subscribe if you're not already. And don't forget to click on that notification bell. So until next time, bye for now.